in Gaza, the daily fight to survive grinds on. The fervent wish of so many Gazans and of Israeli relatives of hostages held by Hamas is for a ceasefire. But warnings from Washington of what it calls a credible threat that Iran is planning an imminent attack against Israel have raised fears of escalation. My expectation sooner than later. Mr. Your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Washington has sent its top general to Israel in a gesture of support, meeting with Israel's defense minister. Our enemies think they can pull Israel and the United States apart, says Yoav Gallant, but the opposite is true. Israel is widely believed to have been behind an attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus earlier this month, but reportedly didn't inform Washington ahead of time. Seven people were killed, including two top Iranian generals, prompting Tehran to promise retaliation. But they fear at the end of the day, any direct clash with Israel will bring in the United States and the UK and other Western powers. And that's the Iranian leader, leaders do not really want uh, to take risks, strategic risks, uh, mm. and attack Israel directly. Some analysts, including Fawaz Gerges, believe if there is a retaliatory attack, it could come from one of Iran's many proxies in the region. The most powerful Hezbollah in Lebanon has been firing rockets at Israel since October 7th. There were more on Friday night. By attacking Iran's sovereignty, Israel is wittingly or unwittingly expanding or trying to expand the conflict, which goes against the overarching goal of the Biden administration. Whether there is or isn't a direct attack against Israel by Iran, the potential for things to spin out of control in the Middle East is never very far from the surface. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.